um, uh, a religious a religious interpretation of emergence colon God as creativity um, and that caught Stu's eye uh, and and uh, well actually he was uh, he had known about me a little bit I had I had read some of his stuff that's one reason I accepted the invitation to come to this conference at all I've been at two or three of their conferences um, but I was I was very much interested in what he was doing as well as some of the other people that were going to be there uh, uh, and and um, uh, so uh, when I was invited to come I was very glad to accept the invitation uh, and I was one of the six or seven, six or seven doesn't, isn't, doesn't sacred mean separate like the Jews use the word sacred in Sabbath how could you have how can you reinvent sacredness isn't well, it kind well, of well, an the atheistic point, viewpoint? I mean, the point. Isn't it like a no god at all? Um, well, um, Stu, 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 at that conference, Stu changed his mind. Uh, partly because of his conversations with me, because uh, Stu doesn't believe in a, an anthropomorphic god, who's doing this and doing that and 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 being prayed to and 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 giving gift, gifts to and just like a big human being. Uh, I don't either. I don't think that makes any sense in our modern scientific world. Uh, but I think it does make sense to ask the question of where did all of this come from? Uh, and where it came from, in my view, is simply the mystery of creativity. Creativity is a profound mystery. We don't know where it comes from, but it, 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 it was before the beginning, bringing on the beginning, and, and it's present now, and it's going on into the future. Creativity is going on not just in the human sphere, but, but in, in, in the whole uh, sphere of life, uh, and so on. Uh, so, so uh, uh, where Stu, where, where Stu and I disagree is um, he wants to talk about the natural creativity of the universe. And that's all right with me, uh, to, to put it that way. Uh, but I, I prefer to go back to the uh, opening chapters of the Bible, uh, which uh, identify God with creativity. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now. I don't want to say that God was a kind of person-like being who said, let there be light, and then light came into being. That's also in Genesis and the like. But the idea of there being what I call an ultimate point of reference for, from which everything, to which everything uh, uh, leads uh, in the universe, that's a, that's a good idea to have for us to, to, to order our, our thinking. And so I think of God as, as the creativity that is behind everything. We don't know what that is. And we don't know how creativity works in the world very much. We can learn somewhat about this from human creativity, which is one species of creativity that has been created. Um, uh, so, so um, now I'm off the track. What was well, that's the pretty good. What was the, oh, it, it was about, about, about um, not, it wasn't about creativity, though, it was about... How could you use the word sacred? Sacred. Now, the word sacred is a word uh, that calls attention to something special, to be handled in special ways, because it is from on high. And, 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 and so I object to, somewhat, uh, to, he can do with words, whatever he wants to do, but 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 I think the word create uh, the word sacred carries um, overtones of of a kind of specialness because of a special connection with God, uh, and and he doesn't want to. Uh, that's not what he's trying to say. He's he's he's, he's trying to say that it it, it is it is a, a kind of specialness that we're interested in. But it's it's all about uh, uh, global ethics. Uh, now I don't think uh, sacred is a very good word to say that, 
uh, because it has all those old overtones about every religion is sacred and has holds to this, that, and the other thing that's sacred, has sacred practices, has sacred beliefs, and so on. Uh, and, and, and they mean they are special for that religion. And they're true because they are special connections to God or the gods and all the rest of that. Stu doesn't, doesn't want any of that, but that's what the word sacred is all about, so I think he's misnamed his book. Do you think that God can be proven scientifically? Um, no. I, I think... I think um, I think creativity is a deep mystery. What, do you, uh, what is mystery for you? Mystery is something that we can't figure out. We can't work out. But, but, but it's, it's powerful. Uh, uh, from it, all kinds of good and bad come. Uh, but but uh, uh, we, we, we're out at, uh, clear at the, at the, at the edge, uh, and we dare not drop, jump over or else we're down in the pit, uh, but it's the edge of our knowledge where we know, don't know anymore what's going on, really. Uh, I'm, now I have to ask again for the word you read. Sacred. Sa Sacred. No. no, 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 not mystery. No, mystery, mystery. mystery. Uh, where we, where, where we are beyond our ability to know. Uh, we may be playing around with ideas, but we really don't know which, uh, which ones uh, count. Uh, that, that's, that's, that's where mystery begins. And where we, where we feel we are at a place that we'll never know. But still, it is something important. But there's still an author of the universe. No, uh, the, the universe author, is the, author. The, the author of the universe is the mystery of creativity. The creativity, and, and I don't like the word author because that's again a personification. Uh, uh, the the creativity in the universe is not personified. Is not anthropomorphic. It's it's just happening. It's just happening all over. Uh, so, so we shouldn't use a word like author, because that keeps that idea of a, a purposeful kind of being. And the creativity in the universe, as we know it, isn't purposeful. Purpose is something that comes about when you have uh, living beings that need to make choices uh, between uh, alternative kinds of values that they have. Uh, as, as, as Stu rightly uh, argues in, in uh, some of his writings and so on. Uh, so so, so uh, we need the word mystery and uh, because, because there's a lot of stuff we, we just don't know and we don't know that we'll ever know. But still it's very important as, as, a, as a kind of limit uh, that we, we put on ourselves that we realize we don't, we, we don't know everything and we'll never over uh, know everything. So there is deep mystery in the world in which we live. We don't know why it is that, that uh, some things in, in our universe are beautiful. Flowers, that's, that's, that's a mystery. That really is strange, isn't it? That with, with, without anybody being concerned about questions of beauty, we have all these beautiful flowers. The Grand Canyon, uh, made by this it's Colorado River. Consciousness. No consciousness. Consciousness is itself a mystery. A mystery. Well, that's what, isn't it beautiful? And it's beautiful. That's what I mean. Uh, 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 what, what, what would it be? we be without consciousness, for heaven's sake? We wouldn't be human beings, as we know human beings. That's a very central feature of our human life, and so on. Uh, but we really don't know what it is, or how it is, and so on. There are a lot of people working around with that, playing with it, trying to find out. But, but consciousness remains a deep mystery. For you, is it something, it's, it's kind of untouchable? No, 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 it's touchable. I mean, it's... Uh, or, or mystery, is it... Uh, 
it depends on how what we what we're doing with the word touchable. Untouchable, I say. It, 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 it's beyond our reach. I would rather use that okay. that um, uh, more metaphor, which is a very similar metaphor, because touching is a specific kind of connection, mm. uh, and and uh, uh, a mystery isn't quite touchable. It's sort of out there. <laughs> but we should try to explain it. That's right. We, we do the best we can, but, but uh, on, on some of these things, it, it seems very likely we will never make it. We might know a little bit more than we know now, but, 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 but what is really involved in, in our humanness, it's very deep. But it still requires enormous faith, because since it is a mystery, therefore it is unknowable, and therefore you need the leap of faith. That's exactly right. We, for, 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 we shouldn't take the idea that a mystery uh, is, is, it, it shuts out faith. Mysteries are what evoke faith. We have to move forward with the future. We don't know what's going to happen. But we can't help it. We've we've got to make plans, and we've and we've got to try this alternative, and we've got to solve that problem, and so on, for the sake of a better future for for uh, human life, or for the Earth's life, and uh, and all the rest of it. Uh, uh, oh, now I lost. Does the, the does the universe seem to have a direction? Does history seem to have a direction? Does I mean? We seem to be in this short bit of recent his history since, like, the Neolithic. Yeah. We seem to be going this away. I mean, we go back a little bit. Does that say that the universe has? Um, we we know it's mysterious. Could we say then, even though there was Auschwitz and there was this and there's that, there seems to be a slow intention. Well, that a lot of a lot of people want to say that. Um, I I would say. We don't even know uh, if the story of humans on Earth is going to go, is going to last much longer. There, there are suggestions that we might be coming toward the end. Uh, uh, so we don't know that 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 there there was an, some kind of intention of some body or some person, or some force, or whatever, that human beings should exist. All we know is, and this is very important, all that we know is that apparently from the, from the lowest, most uh, simplest forms of life, out of that many forms of life many complex forms of life emerged, and ours is the most complex of all. Uh, now, was some, somebody intending that? Or is there some intention there? Some purpose there? We have no knowledge of that at all. All we know is that, that, that evolution gets more and more complex, more and more complex forms appear in the evolutionary process, and we are the, the most complex of all, so, uh, so far as we know. Uh, there may be more complex ones elsewhere, than, but as, as far as we know, we're the most complex. But that doesn't mean that, that somebody was, or some kind of intention for us to come on planet Earth uh, is there. Uh, it, it just seems to be the way it happened to go. Are there, as we look into this mystery and live into this mystery, are there works of art, are there biblical writings, prophecies that are diviners into a deeper mystery, that are clues that maybe the mystery speaks through the language and apparatus or mechanism that poets, prophets, do they have any reality to you? Well, sure, they have reality. They're, I'm not they're, really, they're, they're yeah. around us all the while, um, uh, and and um, one one of the most important ones is 
life after death. Most of the people in America think death is not the end. Uh, that, that's, that's, but, but, but many people also, I'm one of them, think that death is the end. Uh, but, but what I'm trying to say is, death is a mystery. Uh, we really aren't in any position, and probably never will be in a position, to know the answer to the question about life after death, although I'm one, one that thinks it's very unlikely. Uh, now, I'm, now I'm lost again. Unless that life that we project is an anthropomorphic life. That's right. And that's, maybe that's, there's another existence. But, but that's, that, that's, that's, that's because told the, the only kind of life that we know really is our life, and so of course that's what we project it to be. But of course, uh, in, in, in many re religions, there have been other projections. You might go to hell, be down there with all the devils. Uh, now, my, my view is, what's after death is a mystery. We don't know about hell, we don't know about life after death, uh, uh, but we order our lives in terms of uh, whether we know or whether we not, uh, what, 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 what death is going to mean for us. So how comes God in all of this? Is God mystery for you? Yes. Uh, if, 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 we say, if, we say, if we say, see, see, I say God is the mystery of creativity. God is the creativity behind everything, but we don't know what that is. Uh, so we're just, we're, God is a name that we use uh, to identify that which has produced it all. Now, originally in, in, uh, in the Bible, God is thought of as, as a, because evolution is a movement from simpler to more and more complexity. And God would have to be the most com complex reality ever if it's, if it's like the way the, the traditions have talked about God. So, so I, I say if, if, that, that uh, when I say that God is creativity and creativity is God, I'm saying the movement into complexity is God. And it's going on now. It's a process. It's a process. It's an ongoing process. We don't know where it's going. We can look back and see where it's come, come uh, including our own history on planet Earth. We don't even know if there's any other history like it in the universe. Maybe we're all alone in the universe. Um, uh, and if that's the case, then the creativity in the universe uh, is, is certainly uh, active, shall we say, far beyond planet Earth. Billions of light years of reality are there. Uh, and, 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 and brought on by creativity. Uh, so we are on, we on planet Earth are here back in a little corner. And, and, and if, 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 the, if the human story should come to an end, well, who cares? We care, of course. Uh, and, and that's very important to us, whether there's a future for the human species. So that's a problem that we have to deal with. But we have no knowledge whatsoever of what is the future of humankind. And we think now we have been very active and continue to be very active uh, uh, in destroying the conditions of our own existence here. So we not, uh, got to get busy with the ecology stuff and very fast, or maybe it's the end now, just 50 years down the road or something like that. You know, uh, science tells us um, that, you know, before the Big Bang, um, there was nothing. And it, it, out, out science of, doesn't tell us that. Well, they science say, says we don't know. Okay. But and that's what I say. Well, doesn't, I mean, how could something come from, how could everything come from nothing? That's, that's, uh, that's the puzzle. 
That's, that's the puzzle of creativity. That's why I say creativity is a vast mystery. We don't have, we, we, we have cause and effect thinking working all through the Big Bang and, and so on and, and, and what followed. And dualist thinking, God is separate from Oh yeah, God, God did it. That's, that's, God is, 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 is the answer to that question, but of course we, have, we don't know about it. That, your, that's, that's just postulated. Does your theory require a separation from a possible transcendent God? Because it's a mystery, it could be a transcendent God, it could be a guy with a white, big white beard, and haha, that's a funny joke, it's actually what everybody thought. And I, I, I say so that, I say I don't think there's a, a funny old man with a long white beard, but it's a mystery. I'm not in any position to say what it was that brought on the Big Bang. It's a mystery. The mystery of creativity that is continuing as a deep mystery. What point in your life as a minister did you give up the traditional anthropomorphic God, it almost sounds like a Bergman film. I don't know if you've seen those films where the priest is at the window and all of a sudden he doesn't believe. I mean, it, it, you... it's never all of a sudden. Because uh, uh, earlier on, I, I, uh, I got my PhD in, in philosophical theology at Yale Divinity School and was a, a Christian theologian and largely. Um, working within the context of, of Christian theology as, as we've received it. But, but uh, uh, and, and, and that, that went on for about 20 years, but more and more I, I thought the idea, I can't really make sense of this God. Uh, I'm, I've been very in, interested in the sciences. As, 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 as well as religion. And uh, as, as I just said a moment ago, I don't think you can make sense of this pers person creator uh, and at the same time uh, uh, think in terms of, of, of uh, evolution uh, that, that, that just works uh, uh, out, out of chance, largely. And that's so. I buy the I buy the scientific story there. That, well, that, 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 made, that, made, that always sounded very narrow to me from science. I'll tell you why personally. Because let's say I'm enormously powerful. I have a lot of kindergartners in the room. As the end product mechanism uh, seems a limited way of perceiving because it may just be. Yeah a larger entity's device. Fine. I agree with that. That's why I say it's all a mystery. <laughs> okay, well, that you, you got... Uh, uh, you don't know and I don't know. Uh. But, and we think these thoughts, but we can't, uh, we can't really run with them. The only other explanation of the universe that I've ever heard that sometimes feels good to me when I get outside of my standard intellectual identity is what I understand, and maybe it's a Hindu thing or a meditation mm -hmm. thing, yeah. is that there is no I and thou, there is only thou. In other words, the entire body of everything is God. We're the ones making the false well, distinction. Th mystery again. Th that, uh, now, now, now if, you, if you say mystery again, then you said too much. Okay. Because uh, to say it's a thou, or it might be a thou, is, is to pretend like you know something about it. If, if you're really serious that we don't know, and I'm serious about that, that means uh, all suggestions, however important to this group or that group, all are in question. That's where we, where we stand. So, so we can't say anything. We can say that, 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 uh, that the Muslims say this and, and, and the Taoists say that and so on. Um, I'm saying that the ultimate source of all of this is not available to us. It's a mystery. But it has produced a magnificent universe. But you are saying as a 
as a uh, theologist, that there is something which is above religion. Sure, religion is a human activity. Religion is a way that people, uh, uh, a set of practices and beliefs that enable people to go on in this mysterious world uh, and live out a life, despite uh, all of the horrors that they have to deal with. Uh, religions are very important vehicles for human life, but they are also very dangerous vehicles uh, because because uh, they are they are so they are so local. They are, they aren't universal enough. Uh, and so we, we fight wars over our religions and, 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 and so on. Uh, so so we, should, we should stop when we're up against this kind of mystery. Uh, not, not, uh, not, not stop and say nothing. We should say this we understand is a deep mystery. We don't have the answers here. So we have to ask the question, how can we live without any answers on these questions? And we live by producing as value schemes, ways of thinking that we think would be a good way for humans to live. And, and we disagree with that. And part of our problem uh, that we were talking about this afternoon was that we are now uh, coming together as a whole world of different ways of thinking how, you, how it's the best way to live. And, 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 and we have to find ways of living with that and moving beyond that to a situation in which we can converse about these things, but we don't fight wars about them. So what you are saying basically is if we don't find some common values, we end up no, no, I would say, in war or whatever. I, I would say um, that slightly differently. If we don't invent common values, because we, they're not lying around somewhere, and if we could only find them, wouldn't that be great? We have to agree upon them. We have to, we have to agree upon them, but we also have to even invent them because they aren't there at, at this moment, the common values. Uh, but the values that we have, we invented all of those. So we should be able also, maybe, to invent a wider kind of, of, of a set of values that enables us to live together uh, without warfare. And, you know, uh, the, from the famous Woody Allen film, if God doesn't exist or may not exist because it's a mystery, then uh, the whole world's a cesspool and... But that's not true. That's false. Okay. There's a, there's a lot of cesspoolness in the world, but there's a lot of beautiful things too and good things. Love. Flowers all kinds of wonderful things that, uh, get, get, that, we, that, that we cherish and that, that make life good for us. What is love for you? What does love mean? Well, I, I, as, as, as a theologian, uh, I, I, was, I, go, I go back to the way I was taught as a Mennonite child. Love is giving oneself up to others who are needy to help them through life as well as they can make it. My question is, is though, um, you know, we connect ourselves to others. There, there is some kind of instinct or collective cultural truth that we all embrace. But if it truly is, if, if we really are if it truly is a mystery about the nature of the universe, where does that collective, you know, the tie to others come from? How about if it comes from nowhere because the world is mysterious? Then why do we choose? Is it a completely rational choice to make the best, the least possible suffering for my brothers and my sisters? I mean, where does it come from, morality? Why, why well, choose? And we all kind of agree on morality. Why? Because that's a, a biological thing. It be, would become very negative for me not to be moral. But I'm just saying, where do you... Well, it, it seems to me there, there's a double 
a uh, double answer to that question. Uh, all life uh, has many different forms, uh, but but they're they're always uh, cooperative forms. All the ants are out there taking care of the of of, of the uh, mother ant. Did you ever question... Now, just a minute. Oh, let, let me finish. Um, so there's a biological basis uh, for our species to uh, try to encompass all of, uh, of, of human beings in one, in one family. It's very hard to do, largely because of our different cultures and religions. Uh, but uh, but not just that, it's also because we all want to eat and there's not enough food and all of that stuff. Uh, so, but, so there's a biological basis for our uh, a, a worldwide ethic. But there's also an intellectual or a cultural basis. We're not going to make it much longer, we humans, if we don't find ways to live together. We're going to destroy ourselves. Uh, so there, there, there are these two things. There, there is the, the force of life within us and also our best thinking requires us to address these problems in better ways than we've been doing ever. If you had to be a pacifist today, let's say you were 20 years old and you had to go to war, would you become a pacifist again and, and let's say your, the opposition was as horrific as Hitler, would you become a pacifist again and would you choose the writings and teachings of Christ as a substan to substantiate your pacifism or would you just choose rationalism? That's a tough question. Well, I I, um, I don't know how to answer well, then it's, yeah. this, this kind of question. I know it's ridiculous. Uh, what I, I would rather I would rather put it this way: Do I regret having been a conscientious objector in World War II? I don't regret that. I I and I I, I had I was tested in various ways. Um, that it was good for me to be tested. I'm, I, I'm, I don't exactly want to say proud of being a conscientious objector, but I think it was the right thing for me to do then. Now I can't. I don't know what it would be, um, and 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 I've I've encouraged my children. Let's put it that way. I don't know what it would be for me to live. Uh, 18 years old at this, in this world now. I, I just don't know what to do with that. But I, but I have four children, um, and um, they they all are aware of the the Mennoniteness in my in my stance. None of them would would. Um, claim to be Mennonites, and they have not joined Mennonite churches. In, they're not church people at all, any of my children. <laughs> but they are all good people, as far as I can see. And they are all very concerned about the, the, the problems humanity has to come to terms with if, if, we, if, if life is to, to continue. So, so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not laying down the law that everybody should be a conscientious objector something like that. Uh, I would be whatever I would think would be the best way to be, I, I hope, in whatever world I was in. But, but uh, uh, I was in, uh, in, in World War II, that was the place for me to go, and I think that was the right thing for me to do. And, and that was Hitler, right, that I did not fight. Any questions, Bernard? Mm, there, I want, yeah, there was one moment I, I wanted to throw in a question, the question about consciousness. Yeah. 
the discussion about yeah. the big mystery we had before. Yeah. Um, maybe you would like to say a little bit about this and if there is a close, uh, very close relationship between those two. And if there well, is... What are the two? The, the big mystery oh. and, and consciousness. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and you have to talk here to the camera. Consciousness and mystery, the connection. That's a very interesting. Yes, and if if they, if we could agree that there is that these two are very close, then the next question would be if this would be a possible approach to learn about the mystery by studying your own consciousness, since your own co everybody is carrying then the own device, sort of to study. Well, it. that's an that's that. Speak here. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> um, that's a very interesting question. Uh, I, I wouldn't say, as you did, that um, consciousness and mystery are close. Was that what it was? Are very close, you said? Is there a connection? Uh, or not what I, 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 I would say, rather, that one of the mysteries, one of the profound mysteries that we humans living on planet Earth now, in 2009, have to come to terms with is consciousness. It's a very hard philosophical problem. But there are other uh, mysteries. How did the whole thing begin? There are many other mysteries beyond, besides. So consciousness is one uh, very powerful mystery because consciousness is one of the things, I'm sorry, consciousness is, is one of the, the ideas uh, that we have uh, for uh, talking about our um, uniqueness. Well, I'm, I'm looking at the man who asked the question. <laughs> I can't help it. It, That's just, it fine. just goes to him. <laughs> um, um, now I've lost what I was going to say, but 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 I would I would uh, want to say that consciousness is is. We, we, we are very puzzled about consciousness, so it is, it, is, it is connected to mystery in that sense, but we're very puzzled about a lot of other things too. It, it's, it's one of the deep mysteries of human life uh, as, as we think of human life today. There, there are people who, who postulate consciousness is the ground of everything. And yes. if this is so, then uh, we are in the unique position to attack the pro uh, to approach the problem because we have the device of consciousness within ourselves. So suddenly this uh, throws us back to ourselves that we we are able to to approach the big question. That that's that, that's a line I won't buy. Uh, I'm 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 uh, uh, an, an evolutionist. We, with our consciousness, haven't been on the earth a very long time. Most of that history, consciousness was not around. Uh, so so it's, not, it's not our consciousness that build, makes the world. It rather is, as far as we can see today, the world, this universe, in its development, brought about our consciousness. And that's a mystery. Why did it? How did it? And all that. Maybe we'll know more about it in 50 years. Uh, a lot of people are working on it, but it's surely not the case uh, that our consciousness is what produced the universe. Mm -mm. These people don't uh, postulate that our consciousness oh, I understand that. that consciousness as the well, but, but as we an, don't, as but, an independent but, thing. But the point is, the only consciousness that we know of is ours. Well, we don't even know it's ours when it's investigated. Well, I mean, even Buddha said that. Uh, uh, well, let's let's just stay with the grammar of the language. Are you a conscious being? I'm not a conscious being. I'm not sophisticated enough to oh, answer that. No, no, you're sophisticated. You, you know perfectly well, well what do you that, mean that, by that, you, that, that you don't think you're an unconscious being. Okay, if you're going to use it that way, I, I, I guess it means do I have consciousness? Of course. Yes, but I'm not sure it's mine. Well, who, only mine. Well, it's not mine. Mine isn't yours. 
well, it may exist in the mystery. It may permeate us, oh, like we're in we, a big yeah, oxygen we don't, field. We don't know. There. You're right. You're right. We don't really know what consciousness really is. I guess is. I use the word uh, consciousness as an identity. In other words, that concept, that level of cognitive behavior that allows me to say, I'm Richard, and you're Dr. Kaufman. Uh, I, I was using consciousness like that, like identity, but like if you want to say pure consciousness, as in cosmic consciousness, universal consciousness, we may be swimming in a sea of consciousness That's that it. we share but, but we momentarily. Have, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm a... I'm I'm an agnostic on on uh, this because as far as I can see, according to my way of thinking about the universe now, and and this is not an unscientific way. This is a scientific way. Consciousness didn't exist before there was life, so there was. A lot of something around before there was consciousness. Seems like you Con don't know. You can't know that though. Well, well, the, the the whole theory of evolution is is saying that. It's it, 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 not all life is conscious either. Consciousness is a special branch of life. Uh, and there was and there was quite a lot of life before there was consciousness as well. Consciousness came on later than life did. Out of life, consciousness gradually appeared. Uh, so consciousness, uh, to thinking of consciousness as, as a sort of universal thing, we don't have any reason to do that. If we accept, say, the evolutionary story. Now, we, we, can, we can say, well, I don't buy that story. And, and that's, that's an, uh, what some people do. I, I think the whole thing is in a, a ball of consciousness. Well, I, I, I don't find the arguments for that very strong. I find the arguments uh, for the fact that consciousness gradually emerged in the evolution of life. To, to, to be, that seems more plausible to me than to say that consciousness is all around us and everything was swimming in consciousness all the while. That seems to me to be there's no reason to think that way. You, you just brought in the word ball. That's interesting. Ball? The ball. You, 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 you used the word ball. I probably did. Yeah, like the ball of, of everything. Yeah, yeah. This, in, this just brings me to, to the approach of mathematicians that come up with fractal patterns, uh, which they match with nature and with all processes, yeah. with many different processes. It's just these... Um, uh, think this approach of thinking about it that there is no beginning and end, meaning that the top is the bottom and the bottom is at the same time the top. So this also means that uh, the the result is necessary for the beginning, but the beginning is also necessary for the end. Well, I can't say anything about that. I I uh, my 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 strongest aptitude when a, a child was mathematical and I was going to go into physics until um, before World War II uh, I, I thought I would become a scientist and a mathematician but what happened to me in World War II was I saw that the human problems were so enormous I began to see that really I should I should work on human problems, um, social problems, political problems, ethical problems, religious problems, uh, and so I stopped going on in mathematics, and I would deeply regret that now. Uh, I cut off my left arm when I gave up physics and mathematics and, and went into sociology and, and ethics and, 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 and religion.
So, so I, 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 I hear those noises about fractals and so on, but I'm, I'm really not uh, competent to, to make any, any comment on that. There are, lots of, there are lots of mysteries in the world, and there, that's another one. Well, that was a fantastic, brilliant interview. Yeah. Well, thank you. Brilliant. Thank oh, you. I, I, I'm, I'm very flattered. Well, I'm flattered that uh, you chat with it. It's fantastic. Well, I, I hope uh, I, I can, can I, I don't have this opportunity to be flattered that way very yeah. often. <laughs> sure. Wow, it's fantastic. Yeah. Wow. Why is it? That guys like you don't pay any attention to um, philosophers and theologians. Well, here we are. Well, but this is the, this is the first time anybody like you has approached me, and I'm 83 years old. I've uh, at least you met, made it wow. once. So I'm surprised. Really? I'm surprised. Yeah. Huh? The first time. Wow. For 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 this kind of an interview, yes, I think so. And, and the only reason you approached me is, is, is because but, Stu was making a see, fuss and trying to get something going. But see, there, there no, no, you are. No, 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 it was me as well, so. Well, yes, but uh, uh, you and Stu were working together there. Right? <laughs> and, and, and Stu and I had become friends, and as a result, Stu got me involved and so on. But if that hadn't happened, well, you, we would never have had this conversation. But you see, there you are, you're giving the explanation why this very important reference to the ultimate that you, you're bringing very big into discussion, with it, which is very important, I think, but is no, not existing but in, the, in the discussion. That, that's, that's because it's not existing in our public pop, uh, conversation. We, we, we just get very crude, nasty remarks from all sides about, about the other guy. About the other guy? Yeah. What do you mean? Well, all, all those fools who believe in God, for instance. Uh, or, uh, you know, uh, all this, everybody, everybody else but, uh, but me uh, is, 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 is a fool on, on, on these kind of questions. I don't think that's true. I think there's a lot of uh, very thoughtful uh, material uh, in our libraries, and in, and, and in our philosophy classes and in our religion classes um, about, about these kind of questions, but it doesn't get into the public domain. That's, and that's a great loss for, this, for our society. But I think... And the only reason you see I'm here is because Stu is a scientist. <laughs> And he's a scientist that got interested uh, in talking with me. Otherwise, no show. Isn't that true? Yeah, but I think one of... You know, earlier on, when you were here, we, talk, we just really said hello. Yeah. Um, that the only reason you met me then and you met me now it's because Stu is a scientist who has written a book uh, who disturbs a lot of people, and it's an interesting book, and maybe it, sh it has some truth in it. And so that's, that's, that's why you're here. Well, it may say something more about, you know, the secular um, yeah. societies and, and science, you know, moving away from traditional structures that's right and all the churches are empty except for the fundamentalism that's There's right no, and so that's right that did guess it but i mean in no in no way personally this this discounts you i've simply you know i've struggled my whole life to make fun i can see I, that from and, the, from the way you put questions and all the rest of it and well, I and I'm I'm, I'm I mean, so I just never pleased. I've had an opportunity to make a film with someone like you. I would have. I would. What I'm trying to say is, well, that's don't the, take that, it so personally. It's not really. No, that. no, no. I'm I'm saying no. our society mm -hmm. is organized in such a way that guys like me don't show up. And when Paul I've been, I've been, the holders, the holders of religion are very, very strong points. That's right. They don't want to hear my, what I have to say either because I have some questions about their God. And they don't want to have any questions about their God. Well, that beautiful. So, so, so we're just, we're just, I'm just off the map, you see. But we brought you in. 
<laughs> Fine. I'm flattered and honored. I think that's that's just that's the one of the publics. I mean, just generally, uh, you know, that's why all the intellectuals left the church. You know, I came from a German Catholic family, and I can remember, you know, going to that. That there, there were smart people, and of there course. were complex things. We had mass in Latin. We listened to Beethoven. Of course. And then it's now they're like, you know, you know what they do now. There, I mean, where are all those? They people? have good reason for the leaving. Yeah. But but it is it is it is the case that places like like um, Harvard Divinity School, there are only a few places like this, uh, are asking all of these kinds of questions and trying and trying to help students think about these these kinds of issues. And I'm afraid I'm afraid that Harvard Divinity School is losing this too. I don't see. Uh, it's it's. Uh, these are theological questions that we're asking. All almost all of them, as well as moral questions, ethical questions. And and uh, I don't see that theology has much of a future in in American culture. Or the world, maybe right. Maybe right. the world too. I don't know. Science, technology, mechanistic, materialist but, world. But 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 it raises so many questions. Where are the people if, that, that, that see these questions and are struggling with them? Maybe they are asking them in a different way. Like this young gentleman we had this morning, uh, Isaac Mao. I, I would say he truly believes in something which is very, very important for him. And I also believe that he would call uh, is something God, but his interpretation is something totally different yeah. from what theology... But I didn't hear all of his yeah. talk, but what he said, I thought he was very, very uh, interesting uh, and, and, had, and was, was thinking on good, good lines, on good questions, yes, indeed. I think he's pretty close to what you are at least I, 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 to this probably. mystery yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, I think maybe the questions just come in a different color or whatever. You know. That's fine with me. Uh, as long uh, as they don't die. I, I'm, 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 all I am doing is lamenting that, that our, our public institutions seemingly don't find any place for uh, engaging these kinds of issues, which are such important issues for many of us. That's why the movie is so important. Yes, yes, I'm all for you. I'm anxious to see what you produce. <laughs> Richard, it's up to you. Yeah, thank you. It was really excellent. <laughs> very good work. This meeting, because Stu wanted me to come. But I was very suspicious. Mm -hmm. When, when you said before, I terribly regret that, and I cut up my arm with mathematics, I heard myself speaking. It's very funny. Exactly. I, I can just still recommend you to look into some pictures no, and graphics. No, There's no, a, I, I, yeah. I, I'm, I, no, no, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I, I'm having memory loss very seriously, and and I, I short term or long term, both, and and uh, I don't know. How things are going to be a year from now? It's a, so I'm, I can't learn anymore. I, can, we, I can't we, retain it. But we we all have these problems unless we're mathematicians that we cannot a, approach the mm. the whole universe of the mathematicians. Yeah. But at least as I I try to cope with it, I'm looking at, at graphics and, and visualizations. This this I, can, I this should can have, give some insight. I I, I I wish I had continued that. But on the other hand, then I, then I wouldn't have worked on these kind of things, I suppose. I, you can't do everything, you know. But um, I, I do regret that because I love math, math. and and I I quit too early. <laughs> it's very nice to meet you, people. So, a personal question, if I may ask. Sure. What does it mean if a man your age says? that you regret something fundamentally in your life. 
What does it mean? I mean, do you, what does this... Well, I don't know what it means. It's a funny thing because, as I said, then I said, if, if, I, if I would have tried to keep that going, well, then I wouldn't have gone this way. So, but you're not crying after it, that's what I mean. No, no. no. Well, I, 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 I regret very much that I'm unable to engage uh, fractals. When it, it comes up frequently. And I, uh, I, I suppose I could have taught myself read books and so on when I was 60. Uh, 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 but, I, but I wasn't willing to, to give time to that. Okay. And, uh, and so I'm dumb, that's all. <laughs> Stupid about some things. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Well, it's, it's been a pleasure. Absolutely. And I didn't expect it to be at all. Oh. I, I wondered what those guys were going to 